Welcome to the B Max Sports Podcast. Hey, we got 30 minutes for the rest of our lives. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes for the rest of our lives. Make sure to subscribe on all platforms. Let's be great. Let's be great. Hope you enjoy the show. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, with another episode of the podcast. And we have another guest today, Mr. Aaron Pittman. I have heard a lot about you because I know your father really well and your brother. Haven't had the pleasure of formally meeting you, but today sounds like it's going to be very interesting. You were in the Army, correct? Right. How long did you do? uh, I did four years active. They still got me in the reserves, but that's that's basically Boy Scouts. Yeah. I don't don't count that. I mean, they... They're not even doing the drills right now because of the virus. This is, it's not the real army. No. Yeah. So how was your experience in the army? Did you hate it? I know a lot oh. of people that were in there that just fucking hate it. It's. Uh, I tell people it's the worst, best decision I've ever made. I mean, it. It's all about how you look at it. Like, there's there's a lot of stuff I do miss, but there's no chance in hell I'd ever go back. Really? <laughs> you, no. you were in Texas for a long time because I remember your dad going out there, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. I was out of hood the whole time, actually. Yeah. And there, there's a reason they call it hood. <laughs> I mean, Dude, it's terrible. Um, Colleen is like the Detroit of Texas. Is that where it was? Yeah. Where's that? What major city is that near? Is it near Dallas? Uh, it's about an hour north of Austin. Okay. We're about. Two and a half hours from Dallas. Okay, because I've been to Dallas one time before. Texas, everything really is bigger in Texas, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, is for, that is for it's, sure. It's kind of funny <clears throat> that you say that it was, like, the worst. <laughs> Dude, in the best. Because you really never see anybody. Like, all my buddies that were in the military and, like, from every branch. You either loved it or you hated it. There's no in-between. Like, there's some, I mean, especially, like, the Marines I know, they're like, boo, go, devil dolls, boy. <laughs> Rock spot. Yeah, I mean, they're gung, they's gung-ho. But, um, dude, there's a lot of, dude, some people are just like, dude, is he, there's no in-between. It just, it just, you either hated it and it was the worst four or three or four years of your life or you loved it. Yeah. I guess it's just depending on I mean, as far as, as far as the unit, God, I hated it. I mean, fuck 36. That's all I got to say. But <laughs> the the experiences I got to have while I was there, I mean, it was it was just different. It was a different world, you know, especially Austin. I mean, God, that that place is terrible. <laughs> it's so fun, but it's just too liberal for me. Yeah. I, well, that's, I think that's kind of what a, a lot of those guys that were, like, originally from Texas, like, especially the smaller towns, are extremely extremely worried about people coming from California because everybody's trying to escape that really, really high income tax that they have in California. Mm-hmm. And they actually have, I've seen pictures of billboards up there and they're like, if you, if you, or if you're determined to live here, at least vote like we do. <laughs> or like, if you're coming from California, get the hell out. <laughs> like stuff like that. Cause I mean, I think they're a lot of like the real Texans are concerned that at some point they're going to lose their state because I mean both Houston and they've already lost the capital. Yeah, I mean. Both Houston and Austin are somewhat kind of like the Atlanta area yeah. here in Georgia is because everywhere surrounding Atlanta is fairly red, and then you get you get your Atlanta, and then I mean as massive Strangling. it is, I mean there's like. Six and a half million people that live there, maybe a little bit more, and I I think they fear that something like that's going to happen because we're looking at Georgia being on like the the ragged edge of being a blue state yeah, just because and you look of that at area. Florida, Florida was the same. Used to be yeah. straight red, and then you get all the people retiring and going down there from New York and the North, and now they're they bounce back and forth a lot, but they vote pretty blue too. I'd say so. Yeah. Anyway. You said you got some stories for us. Let's get started oh, on the first one. I mean, I don't even know where to start. Here, I, I got what you said. I've been me. I've been talking to a bunch of battle buddies this weekend, and they they've all been telling me their favorite stories about our time together. Um, and most of them center around NTC, which is the National Training Center. Um, so I guess I'll start there. So the National Training Center is right on the edge of Death Valley. Have you ever seen Fast and Furious? Yes. Talking about, I think you need to go back to Barstow. It yeah. Was, it's right there by Barstow. Barstow, it's, that's where that dude was doing the demolition derby, and then he said mm-hmm. that, right? They were in fight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, right. it's just 
It, it's the desert. <clears throat> it's terrible. Nobody wants to go there. But um, when you go to NTC to train, uh, you go for a month. The first two weeks you spend in what they call the Ruba, and they have like these clamshell shaped buildings that you stay in, and they're air conditioned and heated, and you, know, you get out of all the creature comforts of home and got a Burger King right across the way. You know. The next two weeks you spend out in the desert. No phones, no contact with the outside world. It's, you're, you're there to train and that's what you're focused on. And then the next two weeks you either go back to the, the Ruba or to Yermo, which is where we go to load the vehicles up, put them back on the train, send them back wherever we came from. So. <laughs> it, it was really, it was just terrible out there, man. But we had to make the best of it. And whenever we had downtime, they would always come to me to tell stories or jokes or whatever because <laughs> I've always got something. I'm, I'm always making people laugh. My buddy, Coakley, I, I told him I'd talk a little bit about him. He, he's about to pick up his E6. He's about to have a little boy later this year. Uh, congrats, Coakley. But... He told me, man, you got to tell him about that time you threw the wag bag full of shit at me. <laughs> what is a wag bag? Okay, a wag bag. A wag bag is this trash bag that's got this powder in it. And whenever you you know, you know, do your business in the bag, it's supposed to neutralize the odor or whatever. Right, so like well, a looter box. Yeah, kind of. basically. Okay. And, and it, there's this, this thick kind of Ziploc bag that you put it in when you're completely done. You throw it away well after two weeks of filling up a dump truck with shit those bags don't keep the smell in it's right. terrible but um so this was we were at the first our first location that we stopped at and we had only been out there for three or four days and it was our last night at that location they told us we were going to roll out in the morning to a different spot <clears throat> well i got off my shift on the gun that they had us where one person was on the gun for an hour, and you get five hours off downtime. Do whatever you want. And uh, so I got off, and I'm like, look, I got to go take a shit. But, I mean, it's the desert. Everybody can see what you're doing. So the only choice I had was to walk down this little ravine. I had to cross our Constantino wire and walk out of the training area down this ravine to take a shit. And... I got down far enough that the only thing they could see of me was the top of my head. The whole time I'm trying to take a shit, dude's throwing rocks at me. So, so I was like, all right, I got you, I got you. I twisted up the bag when I was done taking a shit, and I took it and launched it back up to him. It got caught on the Constantino wire and ripped the bag open and spread its shit everywhere. It was like Joe Dirt out there. <coughs> There's shit everywhere. <laughs> so, did, <coughs> so did it get on him at all? No, thank God it did, because he probably would have beat my ass. I can't blame him. <laughs> but, right. Uh, That's interesting. Um, a lot of people that have never been in the military don't realize what you have to go through. Like, you take your everyday, what you think is a necessity, like a clean shitter, with toilet paper and all that and take it for granted mm -hmm. people fight for our freedom make those sacrifices for us so I mean, we have one bucket that we could we could put the wag bags <clears throat> in and sit on the bucket and I mean it's like you won the lottery if you got to sit on that bucket yeah that's it see that's crazy <laughs> and the other time you just got to hover over the bag and hope you ring it <laughs> yeah that's crazy that's interesting <laughs> I could <laughs> oh we should because just seen the motion he made when he was describing <laughs> Breathe. It's kind of like old dog sitting out in the yard. That's interesting. That's really... It's, that's, yeah, that's, I guess that's see, the I can, There's people that are built for that kind of stuff, and then there's me. I, <clears throat> my fat ass wouldn't survive one day in the army. No chance. There's no chance. One, I'm fat and out of shape. Two... Hey, look at me, though. I didn't, but you were probably in good shape when you were out there, right? No? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Did, did y'all do a lot of running and stuff? Uh, they did. You didn't? <laughs> no. It's 6.30 in the morning. I was usually hung over. What I look like running five miles? That's no, true. I held back in the back of the platoon and fell out. <coughs> I wasn't doing that. Do they, um, my dad was in the Marine Corps, and he said when they were like on Paris Island and stuff, they would just 
wake him up at all hours of the morning. He's like, all right, let's go on a 15 mile march. Oh, yeah, I'm out. And they're just, dude, dude, I've never, I think the most I've ever ran slash walked in like one, like an actual exercise journey is three miles. And I walked most of it. Absolutely. <laughs> Bro, I know, wow. 50, I could not imagine, dude, if somebody woke up and said, all right, tomorrow, gun to your head, got to run 15 miles. <laughs> I ain't even going to have to even worry about it because I'm going to die of an asthma attack a <laughs> freaking mile and a half down the road. You got asthma? Yeah. How bad is it? Dude, it used, it's kind of weird because they say you like if you have it bad when you're a youngin or something that you grow out of it and I don't have any issues with it anymore. And so, like I said, I haven't run, I don't run long distance. I'm sure if I ran two miles nonstop, I'd probably start having some issues but like i play racquetball for multiple multiple games at a time and then are you worried about covid at all i don't know yeah you are i can see it in your fucking eyes you're worried about it right now right now you're worried (laughs) got in the back of your brain you're scared shitless right now all right you got got another story for us already man so tell me about the uh what was it the threesome. I want to hear about the threesome. Let, let's get to the back page story first. Right, exactly. it, it kind of ties in with NTC. Okay. Let's uh, do it. So, at the end of NTC, uh, after our while well, after our two weeks in the desert, we went back to the Ruba, and they told me they're like, "Hey Pittman, you're going to Yermo." I'm like, "I don't know what is a Yermo. I don't know what that is." They said, "Well, you, Chaos, and some other dudes are going to Yermo. Chaos was the NCO in charge of us, and." Uh, so they didn't they didn't even tell me. They're just like, pack your shit, get on the bus. Okay. Whatever. So we got out there and it, it's the railhead. It's where they load all the vehicles, take them back. And uh we were out there with some Marines. Oh god. I these Marines were not the brightest bunch. I <laughs> they're <laughs> Their MOS was to land the helicopters with, with all the gear and shit, so they have to wear these chem lights on them. And for those of y'all that don't know what a chem light is, it's basically a glow stick on steroids. I mean, it's got the, the thick outer coat, and it's got a glass tube in the middle that you got to break. But it, it's the same thing as a, a glow stick. And they said, yeah, our initiation is, uh, is drinking the chem light. I said, you're bullshitting. They're like, no, 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 I promise we're not. Dude, just just do it. I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do it until I see one of you do it. Well, the three that were out there cracked their chem lights, and they shook them up, and they, they said, all right, now the trick is you got to you got to clench your teeth so you don't swallow the glass, because if you swallow the glass, you'll probably die. We, we don't know. Nobody's ever done it. I said, like, well, I don't want to be the first one. You see this big-ass gap in my teeth? <laughs> it's going to go straight through. <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyway, they, they ended up drinking it, and they all threw up. I mean, I've, I've never seen somebody's puke glow before. That was that was interesting. Well, that was going to be my next question. Was, what in the fuck were they was, thinking? Whenever the, they're not. They're whenever Marines. They, they don't whenever, fight. whenever they took a, took a dump, did it come out like, like some kind of <laughs> nuclear waste? I didn't want to ask that because they probably so would have told So you didn't end me. up doing it. Oh, well, let me get there. <laughs> oh. So they threw up, and and I'm standing there. You're like, you know what? Anything a Marine can do, I can do better. So I cut it open. I clenched my teeth hard as I could, trying to cover up that gap there. And shut up. And uh, I drank it, and it was it was worse than any liquor I've ever had. It was it was ten times worse than Everclear. I mean, if you've ever cl- cracked a glow stick and smelled it, that's exactly what they taste like. It's not okay. It's not something you should be doing. Just because it says non-toxic does not mean drink it. Right. Well, I did it, and I didn't throw up, but I thought my piss was going to glow for three days. I mean, it, it was ter- it, it didn't, to answer your question. We, we, we didn't glow. But, it did uh, burn a little bit, though. Man, what, you mean when I pee? Yeah. Oh, well, that was something different. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> well, you know what's no, but, funny is he, he's sitting here describing... <laughs> How dumb these Marines were, and then they're like, "Yeah, drink this Kim stick." I mean, Kim obviously stands for some sort of chemical, and then <laughs> he's exactly like, oh, what it is. "These retards," and then he goes, turns around, and does the same thing they did. Well, I didn't believe them. They showed me, so I was like, "Fuck it, whatever they can do, I can do better." Oh, <laughs> um, so 
we were uh, we were out there at Yermo, and I met up with this guy. I, I'm gonna use first names for the most part for anonymity pers- purposes, right. but uh, his name was Andrew, and I don't know where this guy was from, but he was more country than me. But he was also fucked up in the head, like he had a dark sense of humor. So we clicked. Right. We're, we're two peas in the pod. So. <laughs> I started hanging out with him out there, and you know we we became friends and all. We exchanged numbers, and we went home on. We we got back to Hood, December fourth, fifth. I don't know, and uh, we ended up taking Christmas leave, coming home, and then I got back out to Hood in January. It was around the the first week or so of January, and he texted me. He's like, "Hey man, I you know we hadn't hung out in a while. You want to come over to a party at my." At my girlfriend's friend's house, I'm like, I, I mean, I guess I got nothing else to do. So, <laughs> and I said, is is she single? And he's like, yeah, she's single. Now, granted, I wasn't at the time. I, I'm not the best person. I never claimed to be. Me, I'm but, the same way, buddy. Don't worry. <laughs> but um, at least I'm honest about it. Yeah, me too. I try to be my best, but <laughs> at that point in my life, I was not. So, <laughs> me and my buddy Danny went over there. Danny was driving me because at the time I didn't have a car. So he drove me over there and on the way my buddy had sent me a picture of this girl. And I mean, I, it, it sh- there was red flags everywhere. I should have known better. I mean, she had the brightest red hair. She had this, this tattoo on the side of her face here, the stars and the moon. I, I should have known this girl's a slut. On her face. But, <laughs> but I'm ignoring all the red flags. Fuck it, going in guns blazing. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> so we get over there, and it's a, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know these people. I don't know that area, so I'm not really drinking that much. I'm just, you know, drinking a couple, catching up with him, and and she's letting me work the radio and shit. And she, I, I, she was, she was pretty hood for a white girl. She, she was pretty hood. Um, <laughs> so, but she was like, you know what, you you control the radio. I'm like, you don't want to tell me that, cause I'll put on some Merle Haggard or some shit. And she's like, okay, well if you do that, play Mama Tried. And I'm like, oh shit, for real? Okay. So, we just, I mean, we drank a few throughout the night, and my buddy Danny started acting really weird, and he's like, hey man, I'm gonna make like a banana and get the fuck out of here. And uh, <laughs> I said, well, what's going on? He said, I just, I don't, I don't feel comfortable. I'm, I'm gonna go back to the house. Like, all right, cool. But uh, he said, but if you need me any time tonight, in the morning, whatever, if you need me, call me, and I will be here. I'm not going to leave you hanging. Okay. I don't know what's going on at this point. I'm like, all right, cool. Thanks for being there, I guess. And he, so he peeled out, and I'm sitting there with Mazer and his girl. Well, Mazer. That's the dude's name. I done told it now. But that's the dude's name. I'm sitting there with him and his girlfriend. And they come over and they're talking to me like, "Hey man, would you, you know, would you consider fucking her?" I'm like, "Do I look gay to you? <laughs> Have you seen that? Yes, without a doubt." <laughs> they're like, "Man, I'm, I'm, we're just wondering. Calm down now." But um, like 20 more minutes goes by and she comes over and sits beside me, and she's like, "Hey, uh, you know, it's, I heard what you told them earlier. They they came back and told me." And uh, I was just wondering, are you you just all talk? Are you really going to do something about it? <laughs> oh, you don't know me. Okay. <laughs> so I, I drank another one, and the, the weirdest shit. She said, I want a piggyback ride. The fuck? What is this woman on? <clears throat> what, who just, I want a piggyback ride. That's just the most random shit. Like she wants one. <laughs> To clarify, does she want one naked? Well, or, or at were the y'all time fully it was clothed? not. We were fully okay. clothed. Okay. Or does she want but, uh, you? She could have wanted you to ride her ride piggyback, her maybe. Piggyback. Well, I gave her a piggyback ride. You know, we walked around the table and stuff. Okay. You know, just giggling and shit. <clears throat> and she's like, "All right, now take me to the bedroom." <sighs> okay. <laughs> so I sat her down on the bed. I'm like, I'm, "I'm gonna go back in here now." She's like, "No, stay." Yes, ma'am. And she she said, "I told you." I want to see if you all talk. Are you really going to do something about it? All right, fuck it. Let's get to it. And we ended up fucking. And uh, <clears throat> I, I didn't, I didn't nut. I told her, you know, I didn't have a condom. I, I might be some dumb, but I ain't plumb dumb. But uh, <laughs> she, 
she she was like, oh, this is my fault. I'm a terrible lay. I'm like, no, that shit was good. I feel like you got a lot of experience. Little did I know. But uh, I just told her, you know, I, I, I drank too much, and I can't I can't do anything right now. And uh, <clears throat> which was a lie because I only had a, a few of them. But um, so we went back out to the party and we we're just sitting around shooting shit for a couple more hours and we ended up going to bed that night. Well, that morning it's like two or three in the morning when we finally went to bed and we ended up doing it again. About five thirty in the morning, we hear this pounding on the door. She jumps up out of bed. Oh shit! It's Moses. I'm like, who the fuck is Moses? Do you have a boyfriend you didn't tell me about? And then I see this guy, he had to have been at least 6'8", about 300 pounds, come up to the bedroom window, start looking through. I'm like, oh my God, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> so I threw my pants on real quick and went and sat on the couch. And she's like, well, he already knows you're in the bed. He looked through the, it, it just, you know, just don't say anything. Okay, whatever. So I just sit on the couch, keep my, my fucking mouth shut. I'm exercising my right to shut the fuck up. <laughs> and, uh, she said it was her landlord. And now that I think back on it, you know, if y'all keep up with the news, every every year or two, there's a, a a story about a prostitution ring that gets busted out there at Hood. I mean, privates all the way up to <coughs> lieutenant colonels and shit get busted in prostitution rings. So it it didn't click until a couple of weeks ago. I was thinking about, it. I was like, you know what? That's probably her pimp. <laughs> I didn't know it at the time, but um. He didn't say a word to me. He, he went in. They went to the bedroom and talked for like a minute or so. And he came back out and just left. He didn't say a word to me. So I was like, all right, I get to live another day. And uh, That's interesting. Very interesting. She, uh, she's like, all right, um, I want to I wanna go get something to eat. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. what's open right now? Shipley's. Shipley's Donuts was the only place open. So all four of us piled in her tiny ass car and we're on the way to the donut place. On the way there, my girlfriend called me, and I tried my best to, you know, hit the button before she heard it. No, this woman snatched my phone out of my hands, and I snatched it right back. I said, I'll pay the bills on this bitch. I just met you. Don't touch my shit like that. <laughs> she got all pissed off. Are you hiding something from me? But I don't have to tell you. We literally just met last night. You need to calm the fuck down. <laughs> she finally got over it and stuffed her face with donuts and shit. But I didn't eat shit. I just wanted to go back to bed, man. I was tired. I, was, I just wanted to go back to bed. We made it back to the house, and we went back to sleep. I woke up like 9 o'clock the next morning, and I, I threw my, my boots on real quick, real quiet, snuck out to the living room where Major was laying at, and I said, hey, hey, wake up. Huh? I was like, I'm leaving. Lock the door behind me. It was a bad neighborhood. Like, lock the door behind me. Oh, Danny here to get you. No, motherfucker, I'm walking home. <laughs> I live like two or three miles away. I was walking home through the hood. It's a Sunday morning. I think you know, it's a good day to walk through the hood. Yeah. Yeah. Anything to get away from this place. But <clears throat> I walked over to the McDonald's, and I, I called my buddy. I'm like, hey, just, just meet me at McDonald's. I'll be there in about five minutes. He's like, all right, cool. So he got there, and he said, he said, man, please tell me. You didn't put your dick in that last night. I said, well, twice. Why? He went to Backpage. Y'all know what Backpage is? It's like Craigslist, right? Like Craigslist like for Craigslist prostitutes. For yeah, right. yeah. So he went and pulled up her ad on Backpage and showed it to me. I was like, oh, my God. I mean, on the bright side, I didn't pay for it, and I got to hit it twice. That's what I, but, that's what I was about to ask you. Did, did she have her prices on there? No. I don't remember. It's, fuck, I don't. She probably did. I wasn't paying attention. So but. you got at least two free runs out of it. Yeah. Well, you bought her donuts. No, I didn't buy them. She bought her own fucking donuts. I thought I wasn't eating. I don't want them to eat. I want to go home and go to sleep. But, uh. Man, That's crazy, I just, dude. I wonder if that really was her pimp that came in there. Dude, but there's I, no I way. it might have been. You know what kept me out of a lot of trouble in high school is the fact that I hated, hated being somewhere like you know, people just like go out of town, like go to like a Cochran party or go to a party in Glenwood or something like that, and they wake up 40 miles from their house, no way to get home. That was my worst fear, is because I hate being away from my house. Especially like when it comes time to go to bed, 
I'm going to be at my crib. No, I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I don't care if I had to dag them, drag my naked body through three miles of broken glass. <laughs> we get home. <clears throat> I'm sort of but, the same way dude, when I was younger. What, I mean, that's really what kept me out of trouble is because all this, a lot of the stuff would be like kind of far away. And then I was like, dude, I don't want to get out there and not be able to make it back. And then if yeah. I don't make it back, and then everybody, well, come on, Hutto, we'll go... Uh, We'll all ride together. Well, and dude, I know how that all riding together jump. Turns they're not going to want to leave. <clears throat> That's a fact. Either a, they're not going to leave, or b, you're going to be off distracted somewhere, and then they're going to come up and just, the, you're going to be distracted or some crap, and then you're going to go out to the cart, and it's not going to be there anymore. <laughs> and so I just do. There was there was a time where I just said, okay, no, I'm not going, I'm not going out. If it's if it's where I cannot get back. Or I know for a fact I don't have a trustworthy ride. Ain't happening. <coughs> Which I had to sense. Speaking of along, I've got a story too. I'm gonna tell it. I don't think I've ever told it on the podcast. Um, speaking of when you said a long way away from home and being a trouble, that sparked my memory. One time I was with some friends in Panama City Beach, Florida, and that's, that's where a lot of my trouble came from. Stemmed from Panama City. It seemed like um really drunk we're riding around in a vehicle ryan cheat you know ryan cheat right mm-hmm. we're riding around in his truck in his f-150 you know d thomas right all right so d thomas um there, there's like i'm in the back like behind the i'm in the rear seat behind the driver and d thomas and there's like four or five people in the bed of the truck we're riding by margaritaville and d is hammered and he he t- was talking shit to everybody well, we go by this little kid, and he did have, have a slight deformity. And D said, oh D said that kid looks like a dick with ears." <laughs> Dude, we circled. We were going. We were. It's Margaritaville. It's like kind of near the strip mall or whatever down there. We circle back around, and these motherfuckers. It was a mom, a mom, a dad. That little kid, probably about four or five years old. Then they had a newborn. Wait, the kid was four or five. <laughs> Dude, he really. In D's defense, he really did look fucked up, kind of looking. <laughs> um, but anyway, the, they come and fucking corner us. And this lady, I didn't say a word the whole time. She is cussing out D, saying, I don't want you talking like that around my kids. He he literally said dick. Wait, but she so, cussed out. Hold on. She I'm, said GD, <clears throat> MF her. She said every fucking word in the book. So y'all are riding down the road, and they're on the sidewalk. They're on the sidewalk. And but then when so we, they, when they're you cut back around, around, when you cut back around... You still got to go back the same way. So they were sitting waiting on y'all to come back. Like so they, they knew you walking. had to turn back around. Yes. So they're like, oh, we got it. Man. Yes. We got it. So man. we're in the Margaritaville parking lot. Why? I don't know. Because we never ate there. I've never eaten there ever. I've been to Panama City a bunch of times. They're like leaving Margaritaville. She's got frozen drinks in her hands. Her husband's got one holding a baby. She's got one walking with a little five year old deformed kid. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't even know what D had said because. I couldn't hear him. I was in the in the truck. She said, I heard what you said, motherfucker. You get your goddamn ass off that truck. I'll whoop your ass. The dad's just sitting over there like, oh, God. Mommy Holding said, an infant? Yes. Said, Mommy, Mommy's got had one too many margaritas. Well, at the end, she would not shut the fuck up. She said, I'm calling the cops, all this shit. I was like, what if the cops would have shown up? And she said, hey, he looked like a dick with ears. And the cops just looked at him and like, well, I mean, kind of. <laughs> Pulls up a picture on Google of a dick with ears and it's like, we can't arrest somebody for telling the truth. That's all right. But anyway, the bitch fucking just kept going on and on and on. And you can ask Ryan Cheek about this. He had just got this truck. It wasn't new, but it was new to him. You know what I mean? Leather yeah. interior. So I finally got tired of hearing her fucking mouth. I said, you're setting a great example. She said, what'd you say? I said, he said dick and you said every, every cuss word in the book. You're setting a great example. She said no words. She Tom Brady, that goddamn <laughs> mar- frozen margarita, through the window, hit me in the face. <laughs> And you can ask Cheat. I was trying to unlock the door. I couldn't get the door unlocked. I dove out the fucking window. And I got out there. For what purpose? Because I was sitting to beat the bitch's ass. I'm not lying. That shit hurt. So I get out there and I'm like, all right, now what do I do? The husband's holding an infant. I could knock him out, but maybe risk killing the infant. I said, but he got, he like got in front. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. She said, get the tag number. I'm calling the cops. I said, no, bitch. I want your ID number. I'm calling the fucking cops. Bitch. <laughs> I'll turn the tables on your bitch ass real quick. Anyway, they got the tag number. We never got in trouble, but that was hilarious. That bitch launched one. She was a good 15 yards away. Threw the fucking window right upside my coconut, buddy. And it fucking hurt. 
Like, it hit me. No, I was looking at it. It hit me right. <laughs> it was like in slow motion, but I didn't move. So was, I was it on, like a? Uh, it was was fir- it like a styrofoam cup? Or? No, it was like a clear plastic cup that's got the logo on it. Yeah, and he just oh. It kind of looks like the pineapple Willie's cups. No, 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 no. Was it like was like a. Fast food slushy cups. No, it was it was even smaller than that. It looked like a solo cup. Like the yeah. Bread, that's the same material. It was plastic, mm-hmm. but it was just clear and it had the margarita logo on it. It was a green slushy. I remember we made these <laughs> little ass plastic. Did you get cups. Did you get any of it in your mouth though? No. It didn't taste good. No. Okay, I want to know how D is gonna talk shit about a four or five year old. He's probably shorter than the kid. First off, I could drop kick him. <laughs> Over the fence. <laughs> D is little, but I will say this about D. D's a scrappy little fucker. Oh, he is. D's a scrappy little fucker. But oh, uh, shout out been. to D. He's a, he's got a kid or two now. He probably he's grown up a lot. Yeah. Does it? No, I think he's only got one. I think right. He's just one. Yeah, one. And he's getting married, maybe. Of. Yeah. Married, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Anyway, shout out to D. Thomas yeah. for that great story. It was hilarious. <clears throat> he got him. Dude, tell him about the gay bar story. Yeah, tell oh us the gay my bar. God. Let's hear that. Let's hear another story right. from here. I told y'all, Austin is a different world. Okay. Austin. Okay, Colleen is the Detroit of Texas. Austin is the California of Texas. I mean, it's just liberals, left and right. You, you, God. Okay, so I had this friend at in Colleen named Waylon. And, uh, Gay dude, but I mean he's cool as shit. You know, was we, he in the army? Of, no, he, okay. he, he worked at a store out there that I went to a lot, and we just we started hanging out. Um, so he wanted to go out to eat at Cracker Barrel one time to meet up with some friends, and uh, fuck anonymity on this one. Um, we went out and ate with. I, I remember the one dude's name was Stephen, and uh, <clears throat> I mean it was me and Waylon. Steven and some other dude and I mean we we were talking and they were all cool and shit well that night he said hey Steven wants to go down to Austin probably go down to 6th Street 6th Street is where all the bars are Um, I I got stabbed at 6th Street one time it's a different story Um, anyway he's like yeah Steven wants to go down to 6th Street and we were just wondering if you wanted to go okay yeah fuck it I'm down um At that point, I, I was drinking vodka, so I was down for anything. Yeah, uh, <laughs> liquor is my is my kryptonite. I think that was before I started drinking whiskey. I, I, I was on vodka and tequila and the clear stuff. I can't yeah. drink clear now, but um, <clears throat> so we got over to Stephen's house. We we're gonna park at his house and ride with him, and we got to Stephen's house and. Waylon went in first. He stuck his head in. He came back out and he said, Hey, when you go in here, don't say a fucking word. <clears throat> okay, why? He said, Stephen is a cross dresser. I was like, Oh my God, what did you drag me into? I mean, if, if that's what you do, fuck it. Have fun. Do you. But I was not prepared for that. When I met him, he was a perfectly normal dude. Well, when we got to his house, he had done turned into Aquarius, who, he had pictures of Marilyn Manson. No, 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 no the hot one. The fuck Marilyn right Monroe? Yeah, that one. Marilyn Monroe had pictures of her everywhere, and I, I think that's who he was trying to emulate. emulate yeah. Oh, my God. So, I was like, are, are we still going to Austin, or is some shit about to go down here? They're like, no, 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 we're, we're still going to Austin. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'll wait in the truck. So, we, well, so I, hold on. Time out at this point in the story. I need to ask some very... You're going to have a I lot need to of ask questions. questions. So, is there, there's a difference between a cross-dresser and a drag queen, I believe. I think the drag queen does like the full-out makeup, and the cross-dresser just kind of like throws on a deck. I mean, a, <laughs> throws, on, <laughs> throws on a dick. <clears throat> throws on a dress, tucks tapes their dick to their stomach or something. Okay, so this wasn't like the, the dude that rides a bicycle in Dublin. It, it was oh, the all out. Queen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was all out makeup, wig, so fake that's titties. A drag, that's a drag queen. That's drag queen. Fake titties and everything. I mean, it, full whole nine yards. This dude had fake titties? Dude, I'm on Imagine me going into a bar seeing this motherfucker and be like, damn, this bitch is hot as shit. <laughs> going up. Like, What's up, baby? <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> gotta go. 
Appreciate you. Anyway. So anyway, I was I was I waited in the car, and uh, they finally came out, and and we took off towards Austin, and I'm I'm just pounding that bottle all the way down there, just trying to cope with what's happening. I was not ready for this, and instead of going to Sixth Street, they decided that they're going to go to this bar called About Time Two. We pulled up in the parking lot, and I saw at the door this. <clears throat> I can't even call him a bouncer. It was some some old ass like sixty year old dude. Just give <laughs> every every person that went in, he give them a little peck on the cheek and shit. I didn't fuck no. So I draw the fucking I was, line. I was like nineteen, twenty at the time. I was trying to get hammered. Waylon's like, fuck, look, just I know you're not comfortable with this. I understand. Just follow me. Do what we do. You'll get in. They won't even check your ID. So I'm like, fuck it, whatever. I'm almost out of vodka anyway. So. <sighs> I, I got in the line with him, and I went through the whole routine. And just, I, turned, I made sure to turn my head real quick before he tried any weird shit. And but it did kiss you though, on the cheek, yes. <laughs> but um, hey, you, you watched. It. <laughs> um. Anyway, got in and we sat down at the bar. And I was like, you know, I need something strong. I ordered a Caribou Lou, and I chugged that shit. So is there a lot of uh, drag queens? Yeah, drag queens, trannies. I mean, they're all reg- regular gay dudes. Just They're just they're, mingling. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, I drank my drink, and I went outside for a cigarette. And I was sitting outside, and this dude came up to me and was trying to hit on me. And I texted him. The kissing him. dude? No, no, different dude. Just some random dude. I don't even know who the fuck he was. Came up and was trying to hit on me. <laughs> and I texted Whale and I'm like, hey, you need to come here now. I need help. He came out there like, yeah, what's going on? Everything okay? And I said, this dude keeps flirting with me and he needs to leave before I catch a hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at the dude, looked at the dude and said, hey, this is my man. You need to go find a different one. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Whatever gets this dude away from me. I know Waylon's just trying to look out for me. He's not going to try any weird shit. So the dude finally <laughs> left, and uh, <clears throat> I went so back is in. Is Waylon in full no, tire? He's, he's just there. Okay. Just like we are. Okay. So <laughs> I went back in, and I got another Caribou Lou. And I think this is where I messed up. What is, what is a Caribou Lou? Caribou you know, Lou. You know Tech Nine? Tech Nine, the rapper? Yeah. Yeah. So he's got this song called Caribou Lou, and they, they actually make the drink now. It's, uh, it's 151 Shh. Malibu rum and pineapple juice. Oh, shit. And it, I mean, it's good. One's true. really, I don't even drink rum, but yeah, one's all you need. 151 would be hitting, hitting yeah. different, buddy. Yeah. So I I got a second one, and I drank a little bit of it, and I went off to the bathroom, <coughs> which, which scared the shit out of me anyway. I didn't want to be in that bathroom unattended. Uh, see, here's so, are there only dudes in there? No girls? I, I don't know what was in there. I don't I don't know if I can label them. I don't know if that's even PC anymore. Well, <laughs> here's my that's next rough. question. That's a tough question. That's, you yeah. know you're in this hard to deal with situation because there's men's dress like women and there's the hard they're hard to make out what what's really going on in that situation. Why did you what was your thought process on I want to get really, really drunk because you know you don't make the best decisions. I don't make the best decisions sober, okay? Well, and that's what I'm saying. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. Like, in a situation like that, I'd want all my cylinders being firing off. And with those drinks, you probably at least shut down half of your cylinders there. Well, that only leaves me with a quarter left. Um, No, I didn't want to remember anything that happened, but unfortunately, I remember it all. (laughs) <laughs> so when I got back to the bar I finished my drink and I left it unattended mm. yeah don't fucking do that but <clears throat> I left it unattended I ended up finishing anyway and I walked back I was going to get back in the car I went to open the door and Aquarius is getting railed in the back seat <laughs> Wait, by another man? I don't know. Whatever the fuck it was. Absolutely. He's getting, he's getting <laughs> sure. real. Sure, it was some kind of man, I guess. So, wait, at this point, 
<laughs> when Aquarius, point. when Aquarius was, was she like a bottomer or a topper? The, the, the bottom. So Aquarius is on the bottom. Yes. Getting absolutely hit from doggy style. Out. Doggy. Doggy. So yeah, that's what I pictured it immediately. Down. So <laughs> is the fake tits out or does I don't Aquarius know. I saw still from, have? I saw it from the back. I don't know. <clears throat> I only saw. I saw enough to know that I'm not getting in that fucking car. I went around and leaned up against the trunk, and I guess I passed out because the next thing I remember is Waylon tapping me. Hey, get up, get up! What you, you can't sleep out here in the parking lot. They're gonna call the cops. Fuck that! I just saw a dude taking it up the ass. I don't care at this point. Take me to jail. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Apparently, they had gone back in the club, and Waylon's like, "Look, we're gonna go get you some food." So he, he grabbed the keys from Aquarius before they came out. And so is this Aquarius is not the dude's real name? This no, is his drag name. This is his yeah. drag name. Right. Not, right. Okay, at at this point in the night, we're with Aquarius, not Steven. Steven's long gone. Okay. <laughs> I was just making sure I was thinking the, thinking the right way. So, yeah. all right, continue. But, um, Everyone's asking me where to listen to the podcast at. Everywhere. Apple Music. Um, <clears throat> Don't worry. We'll send the link Yeah, we'll send the link out. Uh, Tate and Josh in the morning. On all platforms, subscribe. <laughs> so um, he got he had grabbed the keys and we were going to McDonald's and I I don't remember exactly what I ordered. I know there was fries and there was supposed to be fresh cookies because they were they were slow to get my fries out to me. So I went behind the counter and dipped them myself. And when they brought my cookies out, I was pissed off because they weren't fresh. They were fucking hockey pucks. And I'm like, fuck these cookies. And I just threw them up against the wall and shit. We ended up having to leave. You ever been kicked out of a McDonald's? No, I have not. It's, it's hard to do. Right. <laughs> Waylon's like, dude, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with you. I've seen you drunk plenty of times. This is not you. Your eyes are looking a little funny, too. I think you just need to lay down in the back seat and go to sleep. I'm well, like, fuck no, I ain't laying down in that back seat because I know what happened in there. Well, at this, dude, at this point, you'd seen more than most people had wanted to see. At this point, I was ready to sleep in the trunk. I mean, but, um, no, that, nothing happened that night. We went back that home. That you know of. That I, well, there wasn't no Vaseline in my butthole the next morning, so I reckon everything turned so out all right. Somebody likes it dry, you never know. Jesus well, Christ. you were walking right, correct? Yeah. Nothing happened that money. Yeah. Um, not, <clears throat> not from experience or anything. I just, I've heard stories. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So, uh, okay. but there is, holy fuck, I was not expecting that to be part There's of the story. I can imagine. I can tell you that. <clears throat> you text me, surprises. You text me and said the gay bar story. And I was just thinking, oh, he went to gay bar, probably got hit on, you know, yeah. no big deal. But you walked out like seen a dude get, or whatever. Dude, um, female at the time, getting absolutely fucking railed in the back seat. What kind of car was this? Just curious. Bro, I don't even remember. Was it like a small car? It, it, was, it was a yeah, it was a mid-sized vehicle. <laughs> there was enough room to move around, but not enough room to be comfortable. You know. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Holy fuck. I, I'm trying to picture it, but I kind of don't You don't want to picture it. Yeah, if, I, was, if I could transfer it to your, your memory, I would. So there I don't was want two, it. There was two grown-sized men in the back of this car. So yes. it definitely had to be a mid-sized sedan. Yes. It, it was... <clears throat> God. That, why, why you want to make me think of it? That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. <laughs> it's a, yes, very much so. I feel <laughs> bad for you, honestly. Um... All right, so what was the other story you had? Huh? I don't know how much time we got. Oh, we got plenty of time. <coughs> we got all day. Lock. There's Lock being. Huh? There was Lock. one more you were talking Lockman. About. Oh, I can tell you about Lockman. Go ahead and tell us about Lockman now. Oh, God. This motherfucker. He, he was country as shit, too. Kyle Lockman. Good God. When we were in NTC, that's when me and him actually started to hang out. He was one of the mechanics for our unit. And, <clears throat> I mean... Okay, it, we got to NTC November 4th. We left December 4th. It was fucking cold. I didn't know the desert got like that. I've never been that cold in my life. Even when I was training in Missouri in the winter. In the snow, too. N yeah, in the snow and ice. No, the desert's colder. I don't know how. But, um, so we were out there, and Lockman's a... He's a kind of chubby dude. So, <laughs> it got cold as shit. So, I was like, hey, Lockman, come here. What? Look, we've got to find a way to stay warm. I can't go to sleep if I keep shaking like this. Well, what you want to do, cuddle? I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to be big spooning up. 
<laughs> so we put our sleeping bags on top of each other, and we ended up fucking. It was me, him, and another girl, Dorset, one of my other good friends, and we were all in the in the back of the LMTV, huddled up together. Lockman turned around and said, "Hey, Pittman, would it be weird if I farted on your dick?" <laughs> I'm like, what? "Would it be weird if I came when you?" Motherfucker, let it rip. And he, that shit smelled like something crawled in his ass and died. I thought he was going to kill all of us. The other girl started gagging and, and then she went quiet. And he's like, oh shit, I killed her. I killed her. Go get Doc. I killed her. She finally started groaning again like five minutes later. Just get Lockman out. And he's like, oh no, she's good. Fuck it. But Lockman was. Lockman was a trip. We actually took him to Austin the the time when we did make it to Sixth Street, and he was he was going through some rough shit at the time, and he ended up getting hammered. My buddy Danny from the other story right. took him back to the truck and laid him down in the back seat. He's like, look, you just need to sleep it off. We're gonna go back out there and have fun. You stay here, bud. Okay, thinking his drunk ass is not gonna be able to find his way back to Sixth Street. About 45 minutes later, he comes walking through the front door. I'm back, fuckers. <laughs> so he ends up getting hammered. <clears throat> and we we left, had to take him back home. And he just, he is completely incoherent. He does not know where he's at, what he's doing. He's just gone. And we had this cot set up for him that we tactically acquired from the motor pool. I stole a few of them, but um, they, they fucked me out of enough money, I figured I could fuck them back. But <clears throat> we had the cot set up in the living room, and we were going to lay him down on it because we knew he was drunk, we knew he was going to throw up. He ain't laying in our beds, he ain't throwing up on the couch. No, if he's going to throw up, he's going to do it on that hardwood and clean it up in the morning. We already had the bucket of bleach water ready. We had to strap him down to the cot. <laughs> he's so... <laughs> He somehow managed to get out of the straps, got up and walked into the kitchen, face planted into the fridge. There is still a dent in that fridge from his face. He fell down and landed in the hot water. With bleach? Yeah, with, with bleach and everything. He stained his clothes all up. Next morning he woke up. What well, smells like bleach? Bitch, your face. How does it feel? You left a dent in the refrigerator. Ah, oh, fuck it. My head's hurting too. What? It's, could you hit the fridge? You're being stupid. We had so many good times. His catchphrase was, I'm going to pee in your butt. And that, that, that should give you kind of an example of what kind of those person. Don't we, that, that's, his, that's the kind of person he is. Okay, so now I got a story. When you're telling stories, it reminds me of stories. I don't know why the story popped in my head. <laughs> me and a bunch of friends went to River Street for uh, St. Patrick's Day one year, and we took the ferry over, no bullshit, um, and we were in this bar, and I'm not going to name the dude's name because I don't know if he wants everybody to know how intoxicated he fucking was that night, but he, like you, was a former, he was in the Army. I mean, anyway, so we're in River Street, we're in some bar, it's like, so it's got a big shamrock on it. I can't remember the name of it. He gets kicked out. I was like, hey, man, I'm going to come out here with you so you ain't alone. There's a fuck, fuck ton of people. So we get out there, and I'm sitting there talking to him. He was so fucked up. I knew he was about to pass out. He's like, I'm going to lay down in the bed of this truck. I'll be good. I said, all right. So he laid down in the bed of the truck. I didn't think anything. We thought somebody that worked at the bar. There's nowhere to park on River Street as it is. So you've got to be probably working at the bar to park there, we thought. This motherfucker calls me about three hours later. I had forgot all about him. I said, where are you at? He was in, um, what's the place right by Statesboro? The, oh, uh, uh, right on the interstate. Uh, right by the interstate. <laughs> oh, dang. It's got a McDonald's, a Zaxby's, a little, I mean, it's right there by Statesboro on the interstate. I can't remember. I can't either. He was in that town. He calls me three hours later. He's like, hey, man. I said, I said, are you still outside? He said, yeah, I'm outside, but I'm not in Savannah anymore. <laughs> I said, where the fuck are you at? He, had, he was so drunk, he passed out, and the dude drove down the fucking interstate with him in the bed of his truck and never knew. <laughs> <laughs> and they pulled up in this town, and this dude is staying in a hotel 
right right there. He's like, this dude pulled up, got went in the hotel room. I'm out. I'm at Zaxby's. He said, of course, they're closed. It's like, we had to leave River Street to go pick this motherfucker up and come back. Dude, how do you make it? That fuck, it was, let's say, Statesboro is probably, what, an hour from Savannah? Maybe a little longer? Yeah. He made it that far in the bed of a fucking truck. And re- it was pretty chilly that night, if I remember correctly. I don't so was remember. he asleep he the whole time? He was passed out drunk. The whole time. And I'm pretty sure he was on some <clears throat> some other stuff, too. But, yeah, he was drunk. He said he woke up, and he just looked up, and there, he was at a hotel. He thought he was with us. So he got out looked at the truck. He's like, oh, fuck, this isn't their truck. Where am I? I guess he looked around and found out where he was at and called us, and we went and picked him up and went back to smell. You see, that's one of those <laughs> worst-case scenarios that I was talking about earlier. You get somewhere, you don't necessarily have your own ride back, and you're far in a faraway land. <laughs> and then you end up in, in a even, galaxy far, far I don't even know how he got to Savannah. He didn't come with us. <clears throat> yeah. But he, he's from Dublin. And he, he saw, I guess <clears throat> he saw our Snapchats and shit. We met up with him. He was by himself. Just roaming Savannah. This dude's a roamer. <laughs> yeah. So, pretty fucking wild story. All right. We're running up on an hour. Let's let's hear the threesome story. I've been really wanting to hear this one. Which threesome story? You've had I've, multiple threesomes? Never mind. Oh. <laughs> I want to plead the fifth of Jack on that one. Okay. Um, so the one I was talking about was with my buddy David. And like I said, I was not always the best person. I was with a different girl at this time. But I was getting ready to leave her anyway. I mean, I, okay, you got to you gotta be with a few fives to appreciate a ten. She was Absolutely. one of those fives. She was built like a fucking linebacker. I'm not even going to lie. But... Um, I was we, we were at the motor pool one day and we got released for lunch and so me and my buddy David went to Taco Bell and he was telling me that he had this girl coming in that he went to basic with her, her I think it was Andrea something anyway I was just fucking with him I'm like hey man if you need if you need to tag out just let me know well I forgot all about it it was two or three weeks later. I was over at the girlfriend's house, and he called me. He's like, hey, man, you still down to do that thing? What thing? What are you talking about? He's like, remember, Andrea's coming in? I'm like, oh, oh uh, the, yeah, yeah, I'll take you to do your online classes. Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. So I told her, look, I got to go. I'll see you maybe tomorrow. Who knows? Uh, so I met up with him. They had, they had rented this, this suite right off post, and they were... They, they were staying there just for the night. I mean, I don't know why they didn't pay by the hour. It would have been cheaper. But he told me, bring your handcuffs. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I got there and talked to him a little bit, you know, just hanging out. And she wasn't really into it at the time. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. It's whatever, you know. I went down to McDonald's, got something to eat. I was fixing to head back on post. He called me. He's like, Pittman, come back now. She's ready. <laughs> okay. So, I <laughs> got back there, and she's just there in her underwear. He's already got her cuffed up to the bed. He's got one, one cuff on her <laughs> arm, one cuff on the bed. And, you know, we, we get having a little bit of fun, nothing serious yet, <clears throat> and she wants to be taken off the bed. Well, our dumbasses didn't take the cuff off of her arm first. We uncuffed her from the bed, and she took off out the door. She ran into the back of the truck parked next to us, the, the room next to us. She ran into the back of that one and the people came outside to see what was going on. And I, David's like, look, dude, you got to go after her. I'm like, why me? That's your girl. No. He said, look, big ass black dude, little bitty white girl in handcuffs. You got to go get her. I'm like, all right, I understand. <laughs> so I went out there and I, I finally convinced her to come back in. I was talking to people. I'm like, look, I'm sorry. You know, we, we were just cutting up, and she 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 didn't know what she was doing. She ran out the door. So I'm like, no, 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 it's cool. I mean, we we're just wondering what was going on. I mean, they were really cool about it. So we got her back inside. and uh, <laughs> So why did she run away? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what her thought process was. But I guess she thought we were chasing her around the bed. We was going to chase her around the parking lot. Fuck no, snake. <laughs> I'm in my underwear. I ain't trying to go outside. So, 
That's uh, unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Well, we finally got her back inside, and you know, we we took the handcuffs off. We're like, fuck this. We don't want this. We don't want the cops coming out here thinking you know some bad shits happening. You know, with the, that's because the prostitution. I mean, as I'm hearing this story, I kind of feel like I'm hearing a crime unfold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really what it sounds like. That's why I had to go chase her. But um. So we we got to going at it, you know. We're me and him's high fiving each other while we're Eiffel Towering and shit. And she was trying to get us to kiss me, me and him. And we're like, whoa, look, we're already doing some freaky shit. We're not taking it there. You need to calm the fuck down. <laughs> so, Absolutely. So <laughs> we, at first, David was mad because. I was as big as him. Okay. So, he was mad about that first. And then at one point, I accidentally slid out and slid back into the back door. And she was like, oh, oh, wrong hole. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. And she's like, I said wrong hole. I didn't say stop. Okay. So, I kept going. So, he was mad about that because he was like, look, she, she didn't ride it up the ass. You know, I was supposed to be the first one. Man, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know what to tell you. Too late. <laughs> I think at the point, the time where you start inviting people into your sexual relationship with your girlfriend, you've kind of already given up the spot where you want to be the first in, in anything. In what? anything. <laughs> Wasn't a girlfriend. She was just. You know, she was just there. She was on the oh, back page. Yeah. But um. Uh, so I mean we we had fun and all we and neither one of us finished but uh, we were like you know what it's it's getting late we both got to work in the morning so we wrapped it up and she she said well can we at least go take a shower and I'm like I mean yeah, y'all go ahead you paid for the room go take a shower she's like no 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 all three of us what the fuck all right fuck it you you did this for us might as well you know make you happy a little bit so we went and sat in the bathtub she she wanted to take a bath and all when we got in there she started filling up the tub and so it was me on one side her in the middle and then david was on the other side wait all three of y'all all three of us yes in a but after you, tub. after you showered with 15 other guys in basic you just you don't give a shit anymore You've already seen so many dicks. What's yeah, but a one? bath is a, a whole new level of just. I don't. It, I didn't say it was normal. I told you I've done some weird shit. Hey, what about the German girl story? Would, when y'all call me gay? Would you hold on a minute? All right. <laughs> so we're all sitting there in the bathtub, and we're just talking about it. You know, talking about what happened and everything. I don't know what they said, but. <laughs> It made me laugh so hard. It made me laugh so hard that I farted in the bathtub and I shook. I shook the walls in there. Good God, son. Doing some serious <laughs> some serious work there. David's like, yo, man, fuck this. I'm getting out before that little submarine turd floats. <laughs> oh, That's very and that interesting. Was, that was the end of that. I mean, we... we I mean, we, me and David still close, and we still talk. But uh, <laughs> we were out in the field about a month later, and he said, "Hey, I need you to come here. I need to talk to you." All right, cool. What's going on? He said, "Andrea texted me. She said she thinks she's pregnant." I'm like, "Well, you know where I was." <laughs> said, "Did you nut in her?" He's like, "No. Did you? No, I didn't at all." So, <laughs> come to find out, she wasn't. But he scared the shit out of us. Yeah, that'd be interesting. So you said that's kind of like it's kind of like taking like a scratch off, and when it comes so out, like this this guy was black, right? Yeah, so it would have so been a, determined. It wouldn't have been a pink or a blue cake. It would have been a chocolate or vanilla cake. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. All right, let's hear the other story. What was the, hear the story he was talking about? The German. German girl. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. He know the German girl. Y'all, all y'all called me gay. Selena. God. <laughs> That was no, a, I called you a cock block. That was a beautiful German girl. Is all I gotta say. Y'all were talking about. Oh, I probably shouldn't speak on this. She's from Urge, right? I can neither confirm nor deny. Okay, that. yeah, we probably. Oh should, no, we can't talk about. We should really should talk about. No, no. We're not. I told him to sit over there and shut up. No, we, we, don't listen we can't to talk about. Yes, that. we but can't um, talk about her. Oh, no, we're not talking about that. That's not one of my stories. 
Well, yeah, was sure. it, there was one more that they wanted me to tell. Um, my buddy Connor. Lane Connor, we called him Loose Cannon. His initials were LC, we called him Loose Cannon. And uh, he wanted me to tell another story about NTC. So we had been out in the desert for a week and a half at this point. We were, we were all getting tired of each other. We were ready to go home. We didn't want to fucking be there. Tensions were high. I was put in the truck with my squad leader that I couldn't fucking stand. This dude was straight from Africa. He, he was from Ghana. And we we just didn't get along. We had different mindsets. Um, I didn't know it. It makes sense now, looking back. But they don't use tobacco over there at all. They don't smoke. They don't dip. Um, so I was dipping in the truck after he told me not to. I didn't care. I had a bottle. I wasn't making a mess, you know. It was it was late at night. We were doing a convoy. It, we we had already took off our MVGs. We were doing white lights and. We were we were on this convoy out to God knows where. I mean, the lieutenant got us lost so many fucking times I lost count. But like I said, tensions were high, and I put a dip in because I was nodding off. It's hard to do that when you're driving, so I did the only thing I could to stay awake. I put a dip in, and he looked over at me. He said, "Pitman, I told you no dipping in the vehicle." Man, fuck you. He said, "Excuse me." I said, listen here, I'm nodding off while I'm driving. If you value your life and our gunner's life, then you'll shut the fuck up. Unless you want to reach over here, hook your lip in my finger, and take this dip out yourself, you can sit down and shut the fuck up. Apparently, he was keying the mic the whole time. I didn't know it. So the whole convoy heard it. The commander and everything. I don't know how I didn't get an Article 15 and get demoted for that. I got lucky on that one. But, um, no, I told Connor I'd tell that story, so he's waiting to hear it when this comes out. That's a good shit. That's a good <coughs> shit. Um, Article 15, what is that? So, an Article 15 is when you, it, I mean, there's different things. There's three different grades of an Article 15 there's summarized, there's company grade, and then there's field grade. I've had a company grade, and then I got a summarized. Uh, the summarized one, they don't, they don't really do much. They can give you seven days of extra duty. You come in after the work day and you know sweep and mop the, the company building or whatever. But my first one was a company grade. And uh, they took, I was a specialist at the time, best rank ever. Uh, the specialist run the army, I'm telling you. Fuck what anybody says. But they took my rank. They took, they, they gave me 14 days of extra duty. And I think they took two and a half or two months half pay, so I only got paid half of what I would for two months. And um, that, I mean, it sucks, but I I managed to get out of it that time. The the when I did get Article 15, it was for misinformation, some little bullshit reason. They they didn't like me. They didn't like me because I spoke my mind. If something's fucked up, I'm gonna tell you. I don't care who you are. Right. But uh, they had been giving me counseling statements, to, they were basically getting wrote up. They had be, been giving me those for a couple of years, and they were just ready to bust me down. So they did, and I didn't get that back until I got to my reserve unit. That pissed me off. Interesting. Like I said, the military is <coughs> not for everybody. But without them, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have the freedoms to do this podcast. So True. thank you for what you did, for sure. Oh, thank you all for giving yeah. me a reason. That's um, right. Dude, and... I kind of feel like all military guys have the same exact stories except for different <laughs> different names. Yeah. I mean, as far as it is, everything's the exact same. I'll be honest. I know a lot of military guys. I've never talked to one that's walked up to a dude getting reeled by another dude in the back of a car. I've actually, that's a first. That's and definitely a first. A first. <laughs> Most of them won't tell that, but I'm an open that's book. I mean, I that love that. A, I that love is that. a first, dude. And um, I know you probably know some, your brother has hinted at me. Some stuff we may discuss off air. Um, some stuff you may may or may not allegedly know. Anyway. Oh, oh, those things. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we can't talk about I, it on no, air. No, I, I, I can't talk about it off air either. But. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, we won't talk about it. <clears throat> anyway. I, gotta, I don't want to end up like a well, Jeffrey um, Epstein. <laughs> I'm sure you've got more stories. 
and we we will definitely have you back on. <clears throat> it was, dude. I've, I haven't laughed so hard during the podcast in yeah. my life. I, I had to back away from the mic because I was. Shit. <laughs> so we'll definitely have you back on to get some more stories out of you. All right. My favorite. What was your favorite story today? Dude, it had to be Aquarius dipped <laughs> off in the truck. That because a lot of these, some of these stories, I could like tell where they were going. That, that one, one took a real quick left turn. Yeah, I was not expecting <laughs> and, that. Holy fuck! So, but yeah, shout out. Um, hopefully, hopefully, a lot of these uh, we get a lot of new listeners. Make sure y'all support the podcast. Tell yeah, people about it. Dude, go back if you're um, t- if you're listening. <clears throat> If you're yeah. listening to the podcast for the first time, go back and listen to some of our other episodes. Yeah. We've got them. Um, we've got some good ones, and this yeah. is right up there with them, dude. Holy shit, this was I some good shit. I can't be King Will, but I feel like I, I did a good job. That was good. That was hilarious. <clears throat> it's good shit. Um, so now we've had two people that were ex-military, right? Not yeah. ex-military, but yeah. were in the military. Former, former military. Um, and you're still in. I mean, technically still in the military. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, thank you all for listening to this episode. Y'all make sure to give it some love, share it. Um, thank you for coming on, Aaron. It was a joy. You're just like your dad. I can, it, <laughs> fucking hilarious, dude. If James, if you're listening to this, I miss you. So when you get back, we got to hang out. But make sure y'all show us some love. Subscribe on all platforms, all the good shit. And me and Josh will be back Wednesday, I think, Wednesday yeah. night. So the next episode will come out Thursday. Y'all have a great week. Attack the week. Make that bread. Hi. Peace. Thanks for tuning into the B Max Sports Podcast. 40, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Listen, my whole family loves it, man. I never miss an episode. It's the best. We'll see you next week. Go rock this thing, huh? Love you, man. Let's go get it.